restless. I thought I was a little bit restless. I'd been, uh, been in London for seven years and I didn't feel I was sort of getting any hurt particularly. Uh, although I was you know, quite gainfully employed. Uh, and uh, I saw this investment that, uh, from the University of Manitoba and that they would prefer preference would be given to a string player, which is very unusual actually, of course, his university appointments nearly always goes to organists and pianists or so on. So I applied, and eventually I was told that I still wanted the job, I would get it. This was, I think, in 1951, just about the year of the Great Flood, and the, the salary was, was uh, had just, just as I waited for the answer the salary had been elevated to 3,500 a year. <laughs> it which compared very favorably with what I was earning in London, although I was quite prosperous as a freelancer. And uh, where I went, I didn't know whether I would like it or not. And I did, so I didn't sort of pull up all my roots the first year, but after a year I went back and I pulled all the rest of my roots up and I stayed in Winnipeg for 21 years. So you enjoyed it? Yes. Enjoyed it there? Yes. Do you live in Winnipeg? Mm-hmm. 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 Although I didn't, I didn't grow up there. But no. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, you grew yeah. up in Manitoba? No, in, in uh, close to Calgary. Oh, actually. yes. Actually, yeah, in mm-hmm. Alberta. Mm-hmm. So. so when, um, uh, you were telling me a bit about when Sonia and Ferdinand first came. Yes. Right. Um, and uh, did you, um, how, how did you first meet them? Do you remember your first meeting? Or would you have heard via the grapevine about them? Uh, I sort of remember my first meeting, but in a very, very hazy sort of way. There was some sort of a party I think I was invited to meet both of them. I had undoubtedly met Ferdinand already, because mm-hmm. I told you Ferdinand came first. Right. And uh, he came very much under the auspices of this Dick Hiscox, who everybody sort of knew. I mean, there was a very narrow... C- circle that could be called intelligentsia in, in Winnipeg, and uh, I guess I was accepted by then. And of course, it, the aircrafts were a quite very fine decoration to to have, you know, addition to, uh, to Winnipeg's society. Uh, I don't. I just. Don't, I expect Winnipeg's changed quite a bit. But it was, a, it was an awfully nice place to, you know, to get dumped in completely alone, knowing absolutely nobody, you know. And they were, they were very, very friendly, very curious, you know, about this woman who had come all the way from Britain. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they invited me this way and that way for the whole of the first year, really. After which I made some really good friends and, you know, I was installed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, um, in terms of in terms of Sonia's music, did you actually end up performing a fair bit of, of her music? No, obviously she wrote the duo well, concertante. She wrote the duo concertante. <coughs> a sort of for I guess really for Lorne Watson and me. Um, the first, it I think it was also. A, a commission, I know nothing about money transactions, but I think it was a commission for a very remarkable um, festival that Maria Daskin, who was at that time professor of music in the University of Saskatoon, um, uh, Maria Daskin had a, fest- a wonderful sort of six week long festival of contemporary music. It wasn't all contemporary, and there were concerts every night, thank goodness. And there was a youth orchestra, it was a wonderful thing. And I, I, but he never did it again, I think he was a terrible lot of work. And uh, uh, difficult control in a way. Mm-hmm. But uh, that was a wonderful festival. He, he had Raphael Druin, who at that time was a concert master of the Minneapolis Symphony, Later on, moved to a very, very soon after that, he moved to a concert master with New York Phil. Uh, and, and Raphael came with a, a pianist friend who, who was John somebody I don't remember anything about, who was an awfully nice guy. 
And uh, she, everybody was there for the whole period. We sort of got mm -hmm. used to each other and to a concerts, mm -hmm. you know, two or three concerts a week of various kinds. And there was a certain amount of classical music as well. And Lorne and I played the first performance of the Dora Concertante at, at during this festival. festival. In Saskatoon. Yes. Uh, and we played it quite a number of times. I played it with Deidre as well. I uh, don't, don't think I ever played it with any other pianist. Uh, that's, that's, you know, oh yes I did. I did too and I expected, uh, I expected a lot of trouble uh, from him. I played it with a Scottish pianist in, in, um, when I, was, I went back to, to Scotland on a sabbatical and I took a, a Doctor of Music degree as a cellist and one of my offerings for that purpose was this duo concertante. I forget the band's name, he was a very, very good player and I thought though he would raise a good deal of smoke and steam about having the, the terrible manuscript and things, but no, he took it on his stride. <laughs> wow. It wasn't too difficult for it at all. Mm -hmm. So that, I did do that, but I don't think I ever played it with anybody else, mm -hmm. because it really was pretty much of a nuisance, unless you were a, an extremely sort of adept uh, kind of learner. Mm -hmm. Love to do that kind of thing. Right. So, is it the piece was so difficult, or just the, the manuscript and, and I think probably figuring it out? The piece wasn't that difficult. It was a bit difficult to fit uh, the two mm, people the players. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the certain amount of ensemble. But I think the main thing is that it, it looked so terrifying because right. it's on his handwriting. Right, right. Her own <laughs> worst enemy there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about her chamber music? Did you did you perform a fair bit of string quartet? Well, I a string quartet. I was hoping that that, that the, the tape that I gave you would was that quartet. We we played a string quartet once. Uh, Lee Foley, who at that time uh, also went in to be concertmaster of Minneapolis after Raphael. Um, Lee Foley was a very young, very brilliant violinist, really, um, and. Uh, he did. He liked to do a bit of string quartet playing. Would you like to turn that off? Yeah. Yes, I'm thinking that the machine might mm -hmm. might be picky up like that. Mm -hmm. um, Lee Foley made it perfectly clear that he didn't want to have a sort of serious, you know, professional string quartet because that was altogether. Too much work. It's too difficult, really, to be become a string quartet. It's worth mm -hmm. listening to. Mm -hmm. Is it really you should get together when you're twenty? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, because it's such a big, difficult business. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but we used to play uh, in the sort of slightly casual way, fairly often. And actually, at the, at this the early part of, of Lee Foley's time in, in Winnipeg, when the viola player Gerald Stanick was also sort of cutting his teeth. They both must have been young men in their twenties. Um, we, the three of us, played a lot of string trios. Mm -hmm. But in fact, just for a season, because then Lee and Gerald had a big row, and they never spoke to each other for years and years and years, which was a pity. Uh, and I went on <laughs> playing with Lee and uh, and Gerald. Uh, became the viola of the Fine Arts Quartet of Chicago. Uh, so, uh, so, so, uh, I get back to Sonia. I played, I played that. So there was a string quartet that we played, and it was quite nice, and it w went quite easily. Um, I think there was a duo for two cellos. Mm -hmm. That's true, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. I, I never played that. I thought there wasn't anyone around that I sort of wanted to play it with. So I never played it. Um, I don't think it, so. I don't think I played any other pieces. I'm just trying to think. Christine Mather that uh, you know about 
who uh, and she, she played the bassoon concerto with the CBC orchestra, I think. Mm. That was a nice piece. But I don't remember very much about it, but it was a nice piece. Um, Mm-hmm. And the, um, did you ever uh, perform the piano trio? No, I'd say, I'm funny, I, it's funny, I wonder what you wrote it, do you know? Um, well, it was commissioned for, for Marta Heady, but after oh. she was already in, uh, in Hamilton. Oh, yes. So it was, it was a centennial, uh, Oh, yes, so, so I was 67, completely broke by, by that time, yes. Oh, you were doing yeah, the Yeah, yes, I thought, you see, I mean, but if Martha was in Hamilton, uh, I probably was still in Winnipeg, but I mean, you know. You had gone she, to the she, she played, obviously, with the Hamilton cellist or right. Toronto cellist. Mm -hmm. she, she told me she's playing with Daniel Dom now. Mm -hmm. And her grandson is going to have cello lessons from Daniel Dom, which will be very satisfactory to her. No, I, I, did, I don't, I, I actually didn't know there was a string, uh, piano trio. Oh, okay. So you were you were still in Winnipeg, but you were doing the gamba. I at, guess at so. Point, I yeah. guess so. And uh, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. certainly not doing piano trios. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you um, did you uh, end up attending quite a few uh, receptions and that sort of thing at Fifty Four Harrow? Do you recall uh, spending a fair bit of time there? I remember visiting many times, not much uh, in the way of receptions, uh, but meals <laughs> mm -hmm. with Ferdinand generally the cook. Right. You know, if if we'd been rehearsing something or or as I said, something in in mind of that kind, of music something or other, I remember I remember this must be a, a party actually, uh, going uh, going to fifty four Harrow. Uh, with uh, Anton Querty, who was about eighteen I think, and I think uh, Sonia was hoping that he would take on her music, but actually he's not much for one from well, I don't think he did. I think a certain amount did not very much. Right, like he's in, he did the, uh, the concerto. Oh, yes, here, yes, but, yeah. yes, yes, yes. It, it, it wasn't the sort of, it, it was something that he, it was a, a natural for. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I remember this party, very much this party, it was, I don't remember who was playing the violin. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure it wasn't Tanya herself. But I remember going through uh, one of the Schubert trios, and and it was always great fun to be there. There, Ferdinand was a marvelous host. So was she, but but she allowed him to sort of uh, be the host. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was always wine and very good food and things, all eaten in the kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, to, mm -hmm. to cook on the spur of the moment. I really, I really loved visiting that house. Mm -hmm. Did it uh, surprise you at all? Um, you know, given Ferdinand's stature in in the community as the art director, mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. Sonia's reputation even in Europe, etc., that they chose to live in such a modest bungalow. Or was that? I think it suited them. You know, yeah. there was one mm -hmm. very large. Well, I mean, you know, it because you would work there. There's one very large room. The, the living room. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't really know. I don't know. That I barely was in. And I think it was another, another, a decent bedroom where Fernand was also set up with all his stuff. Mm -hmm. They lived mm -hmm. very independent kind of mm -hmm. life. And she had her little bedroom at the back. Mm -hmm. I remember that I stayed with him once. Um, you know, after life, quite re relatively recently. And uh, I slept in Sonia's room, it was a funny feeling. There were so many cushions and things around the bed, mm -hmm. <laughs> suffocating all the atmosphere. <laughs> so the, wi the window could never get opened. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and then they had, in that house, they had a lot of, a very fun, they had a very good basement, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, I mean the basement a very now, modern basement where, where all those, all the masses, books and things could mm -hmm. live. Mm -hmm. I think, I think probably that the house suited them well mm -hmm. enough. They didn't, mm -hmm. you know, they had their family coming to visit. Maybe no. they didn't very much want to entertain people. 
Mm-hmm. They had a larger house than I felt they should be entertained. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it never occurred to me. I thought mm-hmm. it was a nice place. Right, right. Oh, no, no, come in, Juliet. I only shut the door because I thought. Oh, oh. I th- well, I thought you didn't want noise. No, yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's hot. Oh, if you're hot, yes. Hot and tired. Yes, I, I, I don't feel I have provided you with anything particularly meaty. Oh, the, the, I mean, it's. it's um, no, this has all been really good. I mean, it's, it's, there's names and, well, are you familiar with, with Ferdinand's biography that he wrote of Sonia, Music from Within? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. and, and uh, did, he, did he give you a copy of that? Yes. Yeah. I've got that. Yeah, and... Um, and there's another book about the, the, <coughs> the, the Eckhart's in... In, in Winnipeg. Yes. Mm, yeah. And, um, you know, in, in those and other documents, I mean, there's many people mentioned, like yourself, and, and names that come mm-hmm. up, and yet at the foundation, you know, there's not necessarily um, a lot of uh, paper trail as to, no. you know, who these people are. And no. um, and I guess in my role as as the, you know, person dealing with the music side yes. of things and in terms of preserving the legacy uh, yeah. and I guess the fact that it was the 100th anniversary this year, just it struck me last fall that that there's so many primary sources yes. that aren't going to be around forever. Yes. That and there's no, you know, documentation. Like certainly, uh, you know, there is some correspondence, but in terms of, and and we've had like numerous students come to the, to the foundation to do research, mm-hmm. and and you know, I just sort of thought, you know, ten years from now, you know, yes, the, the, these these, yes. um, you know, uh, the evidence isn't going to be um, yes. so accessible, and and so Gwen Thompson was in Winnipeg for um, a couple of of months replacing or, or filling in for a sabbatical leave of the violin mm. professor at yes. U of M just in the fall. And uh, so she actually brought her, her first year violin studio over to the house mm-hmm. one day and they had their violin class in, <laughs> in the <laughs> living room and, and she was telling them all about Ferdinand and Sonia and, and yeah. she had them all each learning one of the violin caprices. Oh, as well, and so yeah. she wanted them to get a sense of who this composer yes, was and yes. that kind of thing, and um, and so I asked her back then, uh, subsequent to that, and then I interviewed her at the mm-hmm. at the foundation, and I, I've interviewed Lauren Watson mm-hmm. extensively, and James Manishin. Oh yes, yes, uh, I've interviewed him as well. I think there was a, a fourth person already in Winnipeg that that I've interviewed, and then and then uh, coming out here, I, I interviewed Ken Winters and yourself mm-hmm. and Marta Heaney. So, I mean, there's many more that yes. that could be interviewed yes. and should be, and so, I mean, yes. hopefully that we will continue this. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this was a, a, a start, you know. Yes, of, of yes, yes, you, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Absolutely. Um, I'm just going to pause. Um, now, um, the, there was some some reference, and you even brought it up uh, briefly about Sonia having written this um, piece for viola da gamba yes. and the harpsichord. Yes. And there's some reference, I think, even in in her letter. I just was scanning the, the maybe, where yes. where she says um, that that I almost lost this friendship yes. from you, or something like that. Yes. And, and in reference to that piece. Now, could you just expand on on what happened there, or? or? Well, you see. It was a Canada Council Commission, what, what, which was quite a, in those days, it was really quite an easy thing to get up. Various pieces I, I, I were, were paid for by the, by the Canada Council, were commissioned by me, and the money um, mm-hmm. reverted to the composer, of course. It was a Canada Council Commission, and, um, and she took it on quite glibly, but when it arrived, it was totally unsuited, mm-hmm. and uh, I couldn't begin to think I could play it. I mean, it, it like it, it was not idiomatic. To it, it matter. She felt she she t- said she'd written it idiomatically for the gamba, but she hadn't. She didn't know anything about the gamba. She didn't know anything about the harpsichord. She didn't even know what the what the pedals. You know how uh, some of the some of the sort of Modern harpsichords have quite a, quite an array of pedals. I, I think that's a, it was appropriate, and it was a bit of a row because she was she was fed naturally she was fed up. I, I mean, you know, so, she so had to lots to her. know, really, mm-hmm. but she didn't know. Mm-hmm. She didn't have any sort. Of, she just sort of 
harpsichord as a six on the piano. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you can't really write for it on <laughs> that basis. Right. Um, <laughs> so why, why did she accept the commission? She shouldn't have accepted no. it. No. No. Yeah. She'd be better not to. But you right. know, the okay. yeah. commission is a commission. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So when when you expressed your concern, yes. you know, or, or feelings, like this, she she, she, she just her feelings were hurt. Offended. Yeah. And then, but somebody turned up and played it on the cello and the piano, and then I think that mm-hmm. that was sort of over. Right. Yeah. So you, so you didn't feel that she didn't speak to you for a couple of years or something like that because she was upset mm-hmm. about that. It wasn't that no, big of a I deal. Think so. No. No. It was just I, that her I, don't remember, I don't really remember anything much about it, but it right. was unplayable. And, uh, and I was sort of worried because you know, I felt I'm not responsible to the council who paid for it, I don't right. know how much they paid, because that was never something you know, that I would know. But I remember speaking to the council people and they said, oh, don't worry, it's not the first time this has happened. <laughs> so I felt all that. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Okay, because yeah, that, that has just come up and I just wondered. I mean, yes, no, uh, that, that, uh, uh, I, don't, how, I really don't that? remember the sort of you know, bitter encounters or no. anything like that, no. but I'm sure she was offended right. and outraged <laughs> and uh, probably she knew in her heart of hearts that in fact she hadn't. She did admit that she sort of thought of it uh, as well, you know, for the cello and piano, but the fact that she didn't think of it for, for the gum on at, at all. all. No. no. Right. Washington. Uh, and then, have you ever heard it performed for cello? Piano? No, I haven't. Or? I'd like to hear it. Mm-hmm. Say. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think actually she, she has it uh, recorded yes, on I a cassette so. tape that that was commercial though. Um, yes. Or, or reproduced yes. Um, with yes, Dolores so. Cahey uh, from the University of Manitoba and Dorothy Bishop, oh, yes. who was a cellist from Calgary. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. And and the two of them. I believe. I, so I think it is on a cassette tape. Yes. Cassette I, think tape. It, I didn't know what was on, but I knew they'd done it. And that's mm-hmm. fine. I'm glad they have mm-hmm. done it. Mm-hmm.